So, um, we all have, you know, emotions and feelings. Yeah. Um, you know, that being said, um, it's 2019, so it'd be 2020. And I guess I should ask you, like, how many times a month or even ever have you had to hunt your own food, make your own clothes, you know, primitive stuff like that? I would probably say most of you never. And that being said, that's because we live in such a modern society. Um, skills like that aren't really needed anymore. That being said, some other stuff, other skills you can think of, aren't as needed as much. Some of those skills I would say that aren't needed are going to be human emotions. Human emotions are kind of unstable and kind of obsolete in our own society. I would say that because have you ever come to school a little emotionally drained or kind of negative thoughts, I would say, going through your mind, and it's affected your schoolwork, you know, and how, like, once you go through that kind of, like, negative era, you kind of push through it, you kind of just think to yourself that, like, I really wish I never went through that. You know, because sometimes your schoolwork is suffered and to the point where just, you just kind of wish none of that stuff happened. Um, for kind of switching over, you know, why we have emotions is mostly for evolutionary purposes. You know, survival of the fittest, so to say. Some of the primary emotions that's kind of back that up is going to be Fear, love, and loneliness. For fear, you have to have that fight or flight instinct. You know, like if you touch your hand on top of a burner and get burned, then you're scared to, to do it again. For the love part, it's for procreation, you know, to build human populations. For loneliness, it's for a sense of community. You know, people want to interact with each other. People survive back then in communities. Um, but then we have those, so those emotions are going to be the kind of rooted emotions in biology, society. But for the emotions that are more kind of current are going to be the emotions of jealousy, envy, and greed. For those emotions for jealousy, we have the need to have what other people want, which is kind of like a toxic trait. For envy, um, people just kind of just want more, I suppose. For greed, this kind of means that like people are willing to be kind of ugly for things they want, such as like money for the most part. Um, for the idea that emotions are kind of like obsolete. I kind of want to like talk to you about, about my own experiences. When I was like early freshman in high school and like late middle school, I kind of started to get a little down on myself. You know, I just, like, wasn't really feeling like all that, like, you know, sunny. And I was kind of thinking to myself, that, like, why do I feel like this? You know, my situation is just fine. There's no real reason to be sad or even like depressed like this. And so I kind of started thinking like, what if my life is just too easy? You know, it kind of like, it's kind of a funny concept, but if you think about it, like, why do we have feelings just so we can survive? You know, if we eliminate the need for constant survival, and constant fighting, what do those emotions kind of have for us? So I'm thinking like, so does that mean that if you don't really have to fight for survival every single day of your life, that kind of leaves a hole Say, in like how humans are made up. <clears throat> that being, he, human emotions are kind of counterintuitive, I would say. People feel too much to really focus on the things that matter. That being said, things that matter are going to be like real world issues, like hunger, overpopulation, global warming, things like that. If we're all too worried about what how we feel, we don't really see the bigger picture of it all. 
as stated by psychologist Dr. Lena Simmons, uh, she's a mental health um, consultant. She has the same kind of concept. People that are you know, depressed and sad and a lot of mental issues, she thinks that it's because humans do have no outlet for these kind of emotions. Um, has anybody ever read The Art of War of the Sun Tzu? He states that one of the only ways to win a war is to have an absolute sound mind, body, and soul. Because if you do not have that, your emotions can be kind of weaponized against you. You know, if you're angry, you're less likely to see what the reality of the situation is. You know, if you're prideful, you kind of become desensitized on like how to constantly keep the upper hand. And if you don't meet those requirements, you're definitely going to be taken out. <coughs> um, kind of like the downside of how we view emotions as a community is that feeling should always come first. You know, if you look at any Disney movie, they always talk about following your heart. You know, that is a good concept. Not gonna say that, like, be a little bad, but that's not always the right situation for the right cause or case for every situation. You know, if you're constantly worried about your feelings, you don't really understand how things are happening around you. Um, in many other re religions, we talk about how, like, what does it mean to have emotions? You know, for like Buddhism specifically, they talk about how you should be emotionally light so that you can reach transcendence. You know, like, it always it emphasizes that you really need to overcome those kind of obstacles. You know, to really find the bottom. <sighs> Um, there is a article posted about people who help people with dementia. You know, family members, you know, loved ones. How do people cope with that kind of stuff? You know, the, the title of the article is called "Holding On or Letting Go," and the main idea of it is the fact that, like, you are, even though that they don't remember, you're still supposed to try and kind of overcome, I guess, your own sadness while just kind of like making sure that things are kind of okay for them. Um, one thing that I would like to stress is the fact that we need to, I guess, kind of look at things kind of as they is, you know, how we need to look at things in more of a scientific and more of a mathematical standpoint because yes, like things are kind of gray sometimes, but we should do our best to look at things more of a black and white kind of situation. Um, on a more philosophical standpoint, um, the idea of overcoming emotions is kind of like almost to the point of transcendence, you know, where you kind of really do become one with yourself because you are in control of your emotions, I suppose. Um, so I suppose that in finishing, I do believe that if you do kind of take hold of your emotions, kind of look at things on more of a mathematical and scientific standpoint, I do believe that a lot of our issues, I believe almost all of our issues, can be overcome. You know, the world hunger, the global warming, you know, maybe even like the cure to cancer without all the greed. And I believe that finding overcoming emotion is the only way to find inner peace. And I think you should let it go. Thank you.